still well, nice, are here. And we are finally happy to introduce you to our Tasso knife with our own patented lock called Ant Lock. Uh, I know that we've been teasing people for several years, but we just wanted the knife, to check the knife, to deliver the, the best we can. And finally it is here. It is called Tasso, the Ant lock is the lock and let me show how it works so you just push the button up and close the knife it's with the thumb studs for the opening and the knife is really light because this type of lock allows us not to use any liners inside of it um, that makes it perfect and even more the more you use the lock the more it breaks through and uh, it just becomes more durable the more you use it. So that's probably it. If you have any other questions, I can answer that. <laughs> All right, terrific. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, after that pleasant demonstration by Paulina, I'm sure you don't need to see my pretty face, but there is a little chance for some knife mechanism talk, so let's get into that. I fortunately have a picture here of the inside of the knife. And what we can see is the blade and the pivot, the tang. And there's a big notch here. And then there's this lock bar. The lock bar has this sort of uh, shape here with the shoulder here that matches the shoulder there and as uh, Paulina was discussing there is a strong mechanism because it has this pin here so the blade will swing around and this back shoulder will strike the stop pin and halt any further movement in this uh, clockwise direction and this pin serves two purposes it's also a pivot for the lock bar now I didn't get a chance to open up one of these but it appears that there's a notch in this lock bar compatible with this this circumference and this lock bar could swing back and forth on this pivot but I don't believe it's attached it's it's perhaps somewhat of a press fit but it's not really attached so the blade is in the same plane as this lock bar and when this knife is fully clockwise and locked then this lock bar is going to be able to come down and lock up the knife and then it's going to be striking this sh this shoulder is going to be striking this shoulder and pushing the lock bar against this pin so the knife will be securely locked up. Now the reason that this is going to fall into place is there have, there's a spring here. You can see this spring that comes in and it has this uh, curve here that's held in constraint by these two pins. And this is a plastic backspacer that holds that. So. Here's the spring and obviously it's giving bias downward. It's pushing this lock bar to rotate this way. It's rotating clockwise this way also and it comes in. Now the lock bar is, has some movement of constraint by this pivot pin so it can only travel so far but apparently 
to move, this has to be able to rotate here. So this has to be a movable joint here, a movable joint here to have the play. Now, what would keep the uh, lock bar from really having too much movement? I think maybe that the way this is shaped, this extra tailpiece, you can see that there's a routed out can canal in here. So this is not in the same plane as the blade. This is alongside the blade. And this uh, lock bar, I think, is held in place because I think the travel of this is restricted to only being in, in this uh, this channel. But I don't know. But anyway, clearly here is a screw. This is holding uh, this uh, arm here onto the, th the uh, thumb button that releases the blade. So I think it's a very neat mechanism. I think it's a very strong mechanism. And it has similarities somewhat to the axis lock and the uh, SOG uh, lock, uh, they call it the arc lock, things like that. So uh, I, I, I think it's a neat mechanism, something new, and uh, likely pretty strong. This, uh, of course, is the nice picture of the mechanism. And uh, it shows things a little clearer. You can see the uh, biasing spring and the nice orange back strap. Uh, you can see the pivot, the uh, pivot pin for the um, lock bar and uh, the arm attachment and the arm is attached to the release button that is accessible uh, on the um, here it's on the right side of the knife but it's also accessible on the left side so there is some uh, duplication of that mechanism looking at it now I um, thinking that the the uh, lock bar probably is attached to the stop pin um, and it it's it's probably um, It's probably uh, fixed to that and can't come off, but I, I don't know. I could look up the, uh, the patent and be a little more sure about that, but uh, I'm just putting up a video. I've already published two books on knife mechanisms. Uh, this is a new mechanism, not in there, but the books have every other mechanism in the world ever made, almost. Um, but just to discuss this one, I've had a better look at it. And uh, here's a drawing uh, again. Uh, the two arrows show the contact point of that lock bar to the, uh, to the tang. And I think when the uh, salesperson, Paulina, was talking about how the knife will break in and become tighter. That that's possibly is the case. I, you know, a lot of people say that about their knives or whatever, but I think this could be true in this case that uh, these two uh, points will wear in and the lock will become better. Now here is me uh, holding the camera with my right hand and trying to 
move the uh, button uh, up to unlock the knife and maybe you can appreciate the movement of that. And what we're seeing with this picture is the back of the knife and not quite in the closed position. There's a little bit more uh, to go. And you can see the yellow back strap, then further forward is the spring, and then is, there is the lock bar. You can see the release buttons both right and left. And just to point that out, the big arrow here is pointing to the spring, and the skinny arrow is pointing to the lock bar. And you can see that's very far forward, and uh, you can't really make out uh, the stop pin because the lock bar is covering it. And the, the small fat I was just showing that there is a, a thumb bob, but it doesn't contact the front of the uh, scales so it has nothing to do with the lockup of the knife and the squiggly arrow uh, here is just showing the uh, release button and this is a sort of a side view to show you with the knife in the uh, closed position how the uh, lock bar goes in toward the uh, blade and that way it's inside that notch in the tang and engages the uh, knife for lockup. It's just a side view and you can see that the button, uh, the release button slides up and down and uh, it's somewhat similar, uh, I think, to a uh, lockback, only things are kind of opposite. The, the, the pivot mainly is, is the big um, stop pin, but its uh, movement is up and down by the tail on the, on the lock bar connecting with uh, the release pin. And there's a spring, so there's some similarity to uh, a lockback, but uh, it's probably uh, a little bit stronger. They don't use any liners in this, and that makes the knife a lot lighter. Uh, with a mechanism like an axis lock, where the uh, cross pin uh, engages a ramp on the back of the blade uh, blade tang. You kind of you kind of ha have to have uh, liners because there's so much force on there. But with this, you can kind of get away with uh, not having a liner. Although there's there's going to be quite a bit of force on that stop pin, so the stop pin better be uh, embedded pretty well in the um, in the scales. So I think it's a neat mechanism, and I um, hope you enjoyed looking and doing a little mechanism talk. Thanks a lot.